Okay, so this is a quick video discussing the solar panel setup for a little guy tag. Uh, so the basics are, you have the, the panel, essentially how big it is, tells you how much, uh, how much power it produces. This is 250 watt panels giving 100 watts potentially uh, total in perfect sunlight. Right now it's about 35 degrees out here and although sunny in Texas, but then the panel is working about half, uh, half uh, capacity. So that's not bad for, for the winter. Uh, this is the general part of how you set it up. So around the back of the panel, as it comes from Renergy, where you can get, you know, buy these separately, you have what they call the charge controller. So if you see the panel is wired into the controller here, it shows you to wire it into the the, the designated holes, just a positive and negative. So what this is going to do is the panel doesn't actually produce 15 volts. Right now you can see uh, the panel's producing 18.5. So what's going to happen is a uh, the charge controller is going to step that down to um, a lower voltage that charges the battery. Your 12 volt battery, depending on how low it is, will charge a, a different amount between like 14 volts if it's bulk charging down to about 13.2 if it's just floating. So you see the battery is at, it's sending 14.5 volts to the battery at 1.4 amps. And this cable here, just again, a positive and a negative, goes off to the, what they call the, uh, the ZAMP connection on the, on the trailer, which we can look at now. You see here, it's just, uh, what they call a um, SA2 prong connector. So this is a quite a standard connector you can get in most auto parts stores. They sell them, the ZAMP connections themselves, if you get a panel from ZAMP, comes with this. If you buy like the panel from Renergy or something, it's more likely to come with, uh, where are they? Uh, these clips that just clip onto the battery terminals, which is fine, but you know, not as neat as the connector. So what I did was buy one of those connectors on Amazon. It was only a couple of bucks. Uh, and it usually come, with uh, about a foot long or six inches long, with uh, one of them at each end. So I cut it in half only using one side and then soldered and spliced that to this marine two core duplex cable which I then attached here to these what they call MC4 connectors a very standard solar connector uh, but I could have in theory just taken this wire and directly put it into the panels there but I wanted to leave the, this is how it comes from Renergy with these attached and the idea being, if I want to uh, attach longer cables, for instance, as I have up on the shelf here that I haven't wired them up yet, uh, this is uh, 25, 25 feet of uh, proper solar cable, which sometimes when you're camping, you don't want, you want a nice shady spot under a tree, which is an idea for solar. So that allows you to run this. This is a 10 feet piece of cable I've got here, and it's 10 gauge. Uh, so the larger the gauge the less voltage drop the larger the cable the less voltage drop you get 10 is a bit excessive for to be honest this run 12 or 14 probably would have been fine you know uh, for the reality of the loss so when I plug this in here you'll see the, the voltage on the battery right now is 13.23 uh, if I plug this in the panel will start charging it in a minute and it will jump up to uh, about 14 volts it should do. Let's see what the thing is displaying here. Okay, so yeah, it's going up now, 13.8. Two and a half amps, 14 volts, two amps. So we can see now 
Yeah, we're getting our 14.3335 volts. Um, so there's very little loss along the cable. We're losing about 0.1 of a volt, I think, along this cable, which uh, what you could do if you want to do a longer run is to take the controller off here and mount it directly in the, on the trailer somewhere near the battery. And that way the panel's uh, voltage, which is always gonna be a bit higher, like right now the panel is nearly 18 volts. You can run that along the length of a longer cable uh, and, and suffer, suffer uh, less loss. So it's more efficient to have the controller, the charge controller near the battery rather than near the panel. But also it, being attached to the panel means it you know, nicely folds up to go in the case. So it's a kind of, uh, you know, you, you, take, you lose some uh, convenience. But in reality, you know, you're not, you're gonna, you're at 98% efficiency or something, but to be honest, you're gonna have to move the panel all day if you're that bothered about 0.1 of a volt here or there. I've used this and it's kept the tag going uh, with the fridge going uh, during Texan winters at least. Um, and Big Bend during the summer with the fridge working really hard. Maybe it, it, it perhaps wouldn't, but then often I'm with a hookup anyway because you need the AC. Um, let's just consider something quickly here. A lot of people talk about how the polarity is reversed with the ZAMP controller, with the ZAMP connection. It's not really a big deal, to be honest. You just got to make sure that you're positive here, your red wire from your charge controller. Just uh, that one is connected to the positive on the on the trailer, and the positive the way they've wired this one up is that the the exposed pin is the positive one. So if you take a, a standard digital multimeter, they're about like ten bucks from Amazon or something. You don't have to get a posh one. They're quite handy for the trailer. Um, and set it to 20 volts DC and place the black, the ground in there and then the red it's quite difficult with one hand there you go. and then like that with the red there on the exposed one you'll see that you're measuring 13.5 volts which is what I'm seeing on the monitor inside the trailer as well if you flip them around, which is what some people are scared of, that it's back to front, blah, blah, you can see it's now reading negative 13 volts. So basically you just gotta wire it up so that your positive is positive. But it's literally not that big a deal. Um, just, you know, positive from the charge controller, connects to the, uh, the, exposed, the exposed one here. Or if you really wanted to, you just take the wires, that are coming off the ZAMP connection down on my hand is here and flip them on the battery. But to be honest, it's easy enough to do it this way. Um, and because I have this chart, this box and stuff going here, um, that's a bit more complicated for me now. But it's really literally not that complicated. You have a panel, a charge controller, enough cable, and uh, the right type of connector, the SAE two-prong connector um, and that just goes into the, the so-called damp connection. Hope that's helpful for some people.